Hello, my name is Jordan D'Alexandre with Cafeteria Media, presenting the podcast, Lunchbox. On this episode, Austin from Nowhere. I had a conversation with the owner of Nowhere, Austin. Nowhere is a recording studio, session space that occasionally hosts shows. Now walking into this conversation, I thought that this was going to be about the space itself, somewhat business, but it showed to be more. Austin showed to be more. A thoughtful and soft-spoken individual who takes time to think, but more importantly, takes time to care. During the course of our conversation, I noticed how much of an open and caring heart he has. He said something that struck a chord with me, and I'll choose to paraphrase it. I want this space to be about making memories, not money. And it was then that I realized that this wasn't a conversation to get to the heart of nowhere, but rather to get to know the man that carries it on his sleeve. So without further ado, Cafeteria Media and myself present to you, Lunchbox. Right, one, two, three. We're here. Man, we are out here. We are so far out here. You know, we're pretty far. We're in Holland. We're in... I can't, I can't, I feel like I can't do the punchline of the own, the studio name. No. I can't make the nowhere joke because, like... I killed that nowhere joke with the, with the fucking video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you <he> did. <laughs> I killed that. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, but yeah, anyway. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am Jordan D. Alexandre. Welcome to Cafeteria Media Presents Lunchbox. The reason we call it the Lunchbox is because imagine you're a kid and you, you come to school. This is, like, elementary school or some shit. And you, you sit ar- around the table with your, with your homies and you open up your lunchbox and you see what kind of see what you got and you guys kind of like pick apart each other's lunchboxes and just like you know it's more of like opening up a little bit opening up seeing what you have for for your meal for today yeah what does your home life look like what does your mom your mom pack you for lunch um nothing (laughs) (laughs) i love my mom she packed me um hmm, what did she pack me i was a i'm a i'm a i was a gluten-free kid for a little bit really yeah gluten-free milk-free egg free i was i was rice beans and chicken man your parents were pretty early on that stuff yeah well no it's not even that i was just allergic oh yeah seriously i was just allergic to all that shit so so yeah it's the same my dad was my dad kind of developed a gluten allergy it can happen like yeah. yeah it was one of the ones where if he ate gluten he actually felt like shit not yeah. like i feel better when i, I feel be- yeah exactly yeah um but yeah anyway to, anyway. to kind of get get it aside um yeah. today i have uh, my name's Austin um, Haney. I do this thing in Tallinn called Nowhere. Yeah, he is a a, a venue owner. Amazing timing. He is, <laughs> he is a venue owner, um, a new venue owner on the scene. Yeah. With in in Tallinn, and the venue's name is Nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. So let me kind of give you a, a an introduction here, sir. Thank um, you. Um. Yeah. No. Of course. Um. It was the September seventeenth. And I, and I made a post about this either before or after this, after this video was posted. But um, it was September 17th, and there was a show that happened here at Nowhere. And it was one of the best shows that I've been to in a very long time. Um, it, was, it was really, really dope. You guys curated a fantastic arrangement of musicians, honestly. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks. dude. You, 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 you killed that shit. You, uh, or <laughs> you and the Nowhere crew killed yeah, that shit. Appreciate and it you. seems like you have a lot of good homies in the area. The people were very respectful of the space, which is a big thing when it comes to me. Um, you know, the the general vibe was amazing. It was it was a really 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 good time. Thanks, man. Yeah, of course. So definitely come to Nowhere for future shows. We're gonna plug everything out after the episode, um, or not after the episode, but on the ending bit of the episode. But to start off, um, I ask you and all the people who I interview two questions. Cool. And then we just kind of riff from there. Dope. So the two questions are: How do you feed yourself? And how do you feed your community? And feed is just like, how do you bring joy to yourself? How do you nourish yourself? How do you fill your pot? And the same thing for your community. Huh. Is this the first question? Or is this both the questions? They're both the questions. Okay, both. question two. Um, I guess how I feed myself um, is really just by anything that I'm like interested in. I kind of have always had the feeling, and it, I, I, I guess I never really expressed it too much because it always felt somewhat like um 
selfish or like oh yeah that's the same for everybody Mm -hmm. but like i can really only do the things that i think are cool and that get me excited exactly and like everything else i do kind of bad and then but the things that i do that i'm excited about i usually like go pretty hard on and i Mm -hmm. i like to think that i like do them pretty decent or i like very much so i mean this entire setup not not to cut you off like just the the love and care that i see that you put into every single aspect of of this setup even like not to not to dox you a little bit but like or whatever <laughs> but like even you were like you know assembling the drum set in the background just yeah. to make sure that it looked nice you know you have a whole lot of care for the finer details of the aspects of stuff that you enjoy i have i've seen so thanks yeah, yeah no, of course. i've tried to i don't know i've gone to a lot of shows and yeah. been to like good amount of house venues and i guess it um I guess to tie back to like the question you're first asking is yeah. I think the things that usually feed myself are I've noticed over the years not that I'm like you know have been here for a lot of them mm-hmm. um but just like engineering things kind of tickle my brain in a cool way sure um so going places or seeing how people do things and thinking how I could like do them better or like how it works like how it all works and mm-hmm. then just being like oh well I have a I have a pretty big basement in my house, and like if I had all these things mm-hmm. and I knew how to work them, then I could do it, and that it kind of excites me. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it's like musically with like musical ideas or mm-hmm. or like gear or stuff, or just um, yeah, awesome. And then how do you feed your community? Um, I would say I feed my community is I, I don't know. It's not something that I think like. I consciously thought about I think I've thought about like how what is the best way to like feed myself um mm. just like being in a place of like where I was feeling unfulfilled in my life mm. um but I don't think that like oh how am I going to feed my community was necessarily a thought that like came through in my brain until you asked me yeah. um I could also pose it as how do you feel like you can or future prospecting how do you feel like you want to feed your community is also yeah. another way to answer that question. No, I, 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 I like being asked questions that I like have not thought of yeah. myself. Um, I think that just, I guess like the goal with this whole um, kind of event show space and recording studio and whole thing has just been um, something that people like it's memorable and it's mm-hmm. a good time and to like um i guess that sounds pretty vague but no i can totally feel making it. that true for it, it, whoever is there at every level so mm. making sure that the band's like performing here um making sure that like people who help this whole project um that are part of it because it's it's like so far from just me mm-hmm. um that like they feel fulfilled and happy and stuff and that the people who come here feel like it's cool and they it's a thing they could be a part of one day if they want to or Mm -hmm. they just maybe it's just something that's like nice to go to on a friday night Mm -hmm. or something and take some stress off and like see some cool music Um, and i think like yeah just making sure everyone's happy in that regard and also just i get really excited about showcasing local art Mm. and um just like creatives and stuff like that um i guess there's just feels like there's a lot of it around here Mm -hmm. and And a lot undiscovered a lot of undiscovered yeah and to think that i have a part in getting that out there so people can Mm -hmm. and i don't know just excites me maybe i can make someone famous one day you very much could that be you very much could and I like the idea. So there's a few things that kind of came up. Hold on, I just want to make sure that my music isn't playing because I think I hear something. Yep, it totally is. You got tunes? I got tunes. What I was listening to some Catronada on the way on the way over here. I haven't heard that. Can you send it to me? Yeah. Remind me after this. Okay. Cool. But Catronada is fucking fantastic. If you want to get into music for a second? Yeah. His production is ridiculous. But this is kind of beside the point. <laughs> <laughs> get into this afterwards. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, a few things. You want to create memories for people you want to have a space to facilitate like really true like almost core memories for people yeah you know and that's a really beautiful thing because some people are looking to start venue just to get paid or some people are looking for the clout or etc and it seems like you are doing it for a very wholesome and humble reason and i really commend you for that man thanks man yeah totally 
It feels like the... I don't know. It feels like the only genuine way to go about it. Yeah. Um, Just, like, focusing on the experience rather mm-hmm. than, like, any kind of monetary outcome or, uh, like, social gain. You yeah. know what I mean? No, totally. I feel like all that... If I were, like, striving just to get that, I feel like the best route to do that would still be to make sure that the experience is good. Cause exactly. Yeah. Because, like, if it's shit, then... It's people shit. aren't gonna exactly it's shit. People aren't gonna want to come back. And, you know, you're gonna get this that, and the other thing on your case, and then it's fucking ridiculous. You know? Yeah. Or on the on the venue's case, but like, I I honestly do feel that that is the truest way and the and the best way to make any type of form of art as well. You know, if you don't, if you do it for yourself, at, at least when it comes to me, if you do it for yourself, if you do it from your heart, if you do it because you enjoy it it's going to succeed far beyond anything that you just kind of copy or something like that. You yeah. Know? Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Yeah. There's a, um, there was a moment that happened in this house a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. Um, this was a house that I grew up in. Sure. Um, and I was super ultra fortunate for that to be the case. Um, shout out mom and dad. Shout out mom and dad one They're time. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Jim and yeah. Michelle. Couldn't do it without you. Big thanks. Yeah. Super. Um, but I guess long story short, they moved and they rented out to me and um, a bunch of my friends. Sure. And that would be my bandmates and just friends. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of my my longtime OG brother um, has been Nate Porter. Mm. Um, shout out Nate. Uh, and <laughs> Nate. Nate always rocks Crocs. Okay. I fuck with that. So Nate rocks Crocs. I fuck with No that. matter where, where he's playing. Yeah. Um, not always, but he will. He will bust them out mm-hmm. without shame. Um, and Nate has FNAF, um, what do you call them? The little like things in your Crocs? Oh, giblets the or something? giblets. Yeah, giblets, something like, yeah, something like that. So he has FNAF giblets on the Crocs. Word. And one day he's, a, he's away on tour. And um, I think it's me and um, a couple of my roommates and... Just some, just some friends, mm-hmm. um, and we looked down at the Crocs, and I think like one of them was trying them on. Maybe I was going, I was putting them on to go get the mail or something. Yeah. yeah. And we all kind of collectively, re- collectively realized that the FNAF giblets were gorilla glued, <laughs> facing towards the wearer, yeah. so that they're really only for the wearer's enjoyment. Right. Interesting. Continue, continue. And that was kind of a. No, I've learned a lot from. Yeah. I feel like I've learned most of the stuff that I am good at from my friends. I'm sure. Um, and Nate probably the most out of all of them. I'm sure. Um and uh yeah, just to kind of like see like oh, that's kind of a lesson. Just it do is. it cuz you think it's, it's fucking cool. Exactly. It's you know, subtle. it doesn't matter. Like yeah. as long as you think that what you are doing is cool and you have like a priority on doing it good. Mm-hmm then it's going to be cool. Yeah, I, I have a story for you as well. Because, like, that's that's really cool, and it's subtle. And the fact that he didn't, like, just tell you, it's like, you know, well, I do this because of this reason. Yeah. He just did it because it's, it's from in here. And I have a story for you. So this is high school, and this is freshman year. Freshman year to senior year. Um, there's this one kid, I'm not going to name him, but he deserves all the credit in the world. He wore the same thing, not necessarily the same thing, but the same general fit for every single year of high school and I'm sure probably still to this day. And I've oh. seen him a few times and he's still rocking it. Like his fit was the the dad new balances. Hell like yeah. halfway ankle high or halfway knee high uh white socks. Respect. Cargo shorts, a long sleeve t shirt, a polo over the long sleeve t shirt, a chain and glasses. And Beast. Literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> And I remember <laughs> freshman year, people were giving him shit over this. People were giving him so much shit, damn near bullying him because of this. And or at least on the wow. low. They weren't doing it to his face, but, you know, at least on the low. And yeah. by the end of senior year, it became his fucking style. And you just see him and you're just like, yeah, no, that guy's rocking with himself. Yeah. And I think that there's a lack of that. There's a void of that, like in today's day and age where it's just like, damn, Everybody is kind of like everybody else. Like I was at the bar last night and I was I just saw this guy who didn't really seem to fit. Hmm. He he had the he had the 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 oh, what is it? Like not really a band t-shirt, but you know what I mean, like kind of like a graphic tee. Yeah. 
tucked in pants, cargos, and I'm kind of na- like describing myself here, but like <laughs> <laughs> that person was me. Um, cargos, a backwards hat that was kind of like this, where it was like just, 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 yeah. just on. And he was holding a beer, and I was like, I wonder if that. I, I was wondering to myself, and I was saying, I, I wonder if that dude really is like dressing like that because he feels it within himself. And I wonder, or I wonder if that dude is just kind of doing it to either stand out or to kind of fit within whatever crowd to be like that edgy, yeah. artsy kid, and uh, to to kind of round out my point or my 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 whatever. I I really do wonder. Like I was thinking about being in your twenties because you're 25. Yeah. Right. I'm 25, soon to be 26. Um, and I feel like being in your twenties is this is gonna be weird, but being in your twenties is truly an age of trying to figure out kind of like who you are yeah. and what you want out of this world. And like, you know, it's, it's, I, I tell my friends this all the time. If 13 to like, let's say 18 is puberty of the body, then let's say like 20 to probably like 30 is puberty of the mind, soul and spirit. That feels like it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. You know, like trying to come into your own. And I think it's through things like this, like starting your own venue in, in your, in your parents' basement essentially. And, you know, curating it to be this very open and welcoming space because I feel like you as a person are very open and welcoming. You're not like this edgy dude for no reason, like, or yeah. anything like that. But I, I, I feel like, and myself included, we are on a path to come into our own and to try to find what really works for us. And it's a, it's a process of trial and error, but through this entire thing, it's it's a process of, you know, trying to figure it out. And I don't know. I'm just gonna end my statement there. But like, no, I feel like that kind of yeah. makes a lot of sense. Like, uh, how do you how do you feel? I, that makes me think of uh, something I kind of frequently talk about with my girlfriend uh, Jillian, who did all the design work. Shout and out branding to Jillian. One Thank time, you. shout out. Love you. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> she's probably working on a poster or a flyer yeah, or something right you. now. I'm sure. It's sh- even though she's she does a hard-working MF or dude. Yeah, she's insane. Yeah, she's the best. S- seriously, I'm like, get sleep. She's like, oh, I gotta work on this. I know. You can't get her to get sleep. <laughs> no, it's not like at impossible. All. I'm like, dude, you can slow it back. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, you're saying. Um, yeah, it's a. I don't know. It's just it was just a conversation that we always kind of come back to about. Um, the artists that are most like i guess satisfying to us mm. are ones that um or i guess not satisfying is the right word but there's definitely like it's definitely always intriguing mm. and it could be hit or miss but mm. just people who live their art um mm. in a way and by that i kind of mean like their their life is their art piece to get really like kind of meta about yeah, it. Yeah, no, but that you know makes I mean? sense. No, I, I totally feel that. Yeah. Like, if, if you're going to be this performer who, like, has this certain aesthetic on stage, mm-hmm. it probably benefits you to fully commit to that. You know what I mean? Oh, my God, yeah. So, and I, I feel like that goes with anything. Um, mm-hmm. Like you said, just kind of, kind of about being, like, welcoming and open yeah. um, to people. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't know. Maybe that's it's something that I, to some degree at least, strive to be. Like I want to be open and and like make people feel people feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. Just in conversation, whether we're like doing a whole production here or we're just like just chilling, hanging out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I kind of want it to feel the same. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I think that I think there is. I guess to to make some kind of point of that like mm-hmm. there is some merit in kind of just embodying what you want to do embodying um, what you want to do uh, um or like yeah i i saw that oh god oh no it's just headphones oh. just coffee, coffee. <laughs> um i saw that uh the night that night of the, s- the 17th with uh one artist in particular that kind of caught my and i think everybody else's attention not that everybody else didn't, but, you know, yeah. it was, like, fucking Slow Pony, man. Slow Pony is a, is a special gem. Jesus. Yeah. Like, uh, I wish, like, I'm, I'm writing a piece on Slow Pony, too, currently. Oh, wow. Yeah, really? no, seriously. Man moved <laughs> me. So, I'm, like, I'm sitting, and I'm, like, initial thought is, oh, this dude has an accordion. Like, it's going to be some dumb shit, essentially. Yeah. And then he just opens up the cavity of his chest and just rips out his heart, and it's just, like here and i'm yeah. like 
the entire time, in, like in a trance, the entire time due to this man's music. And yeah. it was ridiculous because I've never experienced that before in that aspect. Like, I've always gone to house shows or like punk shows or whatever, even like going out to, to listen to house music, kind of in my own vibe, do my own thing and fucking whatever, whatever, and there to like kind of hang out with people and conversate and et cetera and listen to music. But there are very few artists that I've found, at least at the age circling around where we're at, that really can just entrance a motherfucker. Yeah. And that dude is on, and I'm sure the rest of his band, because he was solo that night. Yeah. Um, On a wave. That dude is on a wave to, the, to like, like he found his niche or niche, and he's just digging into it. This is what I feel. I feel yeah. like... Uh, I feel like you can really only kind of genuinely find your niche. Yeah. Um, when you start to know, like, this is what I think is cool. This yeah. is the that pair of New Balance sneakers and socks and cargo shorts. Exactly. And, like, that is what I think is cool. Yeah. And I feel like it. I don't know. I feel like it shows. I feel like Slow Pony, um, Eli, from sure. Slow Pony. He he gets on stage mm. and he kind of emotionally or whatever rips all of his clothes off Literally. and he just lets everyone see what he thinks is cool yeah um and it, and it has me like doubled over because i'm like and mildly envious because yeah. as an artist i'm like how do i get that how do i get that you yeah. know that's that's a hard yeah. ass question because it's like it, it really does show how much work he or eli puts into himself yeah, that's the hard thing, because I can put work into my art, I can put work into a project, I can put work into this, that, and the other thing. But it's not until I enrich myself that and try to figure out like what the inner workings of it, and not just the good shit that will maybe get me paid, or not just the good shit that makes me feel good, but all aspects of myself. Yeah, as an artist, and that's where like like the yin and the yang or whatever, the dark and the light, that's where the true balance and I feel like, you know, salvation as an artist, kind of, as a personal artist, um, comes in. Yeah. Um, I feel like until recently, um, I don't know. Not even until recently. I, I don't want to make it about me because it's not like. It technically is about you. I just this think is a that. conversation it, between us. Yeah. I don't uh, know. You could do whatever you want. <laughs> I think that most people don't know what it's like to do something and have that feeling of that was like I really like that. That felt really cool to me and I want to yeah. do more of that and like when I was doing that I didn't think about anything else. Exactly. Um it's crazy. And being able to I don't know, it's a it's a weirdly personal thing to find a way to open up that doorway mm. more and more or to be able to open it mm. and i feel like with really good artists mm -hmm. it seems like um at least the ones i i know mm -hmm. um that people who like live their they live their art yeah. right have like their doors all the way open all the time sometimes that's mm -hmm. like the extreme yeah and there's like i don't know it feels like varying levels of openness to the of door. openness to that door yeah and ability to open it or close it kind of like at will yeah that seems like i don't know that's that's the fucking goal like, personally that's yeah. i feel like what i've been trying to understand more and mm. it f i don't know it feels it feels really important mm. to genuine cool art yeah or to getting to that point where you're like i think this is cool i don't give yeah. a fuck like if anyone else really does because it felt really cool to do mm -hmm. i don't know no, but I definitely do think that you have a really good point, especially with the door analogy. Um, being able to open up, I don't know, do you watch anime? Yeah. Okay, do you watch Naruto? I can't say yes, especially not on camera. It's, <laughs> it's, a, good, it's a good answer. Anyway, Rock Lee and Guy Sensei, opening up the eight inner gates, man. Um, I don't know if you know this. Way reference. over my head. It's okay. But I, I feel like, okay, gates. Yeah, gates. Opening up gates to unleash true supreme power or more power in dragon ball z going from super saiyan one to etc et did et cetera, you watch et cetera, et cetera. like oh, i'm not i'm not i mean it's not a super well versed i'm kind of committed to finding an anime that we can also talk about what's up um, did you watch like full metal yeah okay i feel yeah, like totally. that's got a door in it yeah totally that's yeah. a door truth 
door truth. Yeah. That's a door truth. That's a that's a big one. That's a big one. That's opening up. That is the true door. Sir. Yeah, that is the true door. That's a couple aisles down. Yeah, it's a couple <laughs> aisles down. But let's use that metaphor. Let's see if we can rock with that metaphor and make some like. Oh, that's cool. I think it's your phone. Um, it's okay. Um, the door of truth. Opening up your own door of truth. So let's let's use. Oh God, if you guys don't watch anime, I hope you do at least watch Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. It's fantastic. Brotherhood. Yeah. Sorry to like weeb out over here, but so you it's a good you, watch. It's a fucking it's a good watch fu- from front to back. It's a good watch. Um, so you yourself appear in this grand white room. And the only thing that you see is this shadowy figure and a, a huge door behind you. Yeah. The shadowy figure then presents you and says, essentially, I am God. I am you. I am everything. Everything that has ever existed, ever will exist, I am that. And that is your door to all the truth and knowledge that I have ever held for you. Yeah. But the only thing that you have to do in order to open up that door or truly achieve you know, godliness or enlightenment or whatever the fuck you want to call it is – you have to walk through, and then the key that they don't tell you is you equally have to sacrifice something. Yeah. You have to you have to give away something. So in the anime, there was Edward Elric. He gave up his right arm. Are and doing spoilers? Huh? Are we doing spoilers? This is early. This is like within the first three episodes, man. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. And it's also been out for however the fuck long. Fair enough. So if you haven't watched <laughs> it now, you're doing yourself a disservice. <laughs> but they don't tell you that you have to sacrifice something. Now to parlay now to parlay that with the metaphor that you said about doors. Um, I would say that in order for you to truly understand and live your – I forgot how you phrased it, but you said live your, your world of art. Live – live. Um, I think I was kind of like – I was saying how doors all the way open is like your art is your – your life is your art piece. That's what I meant. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, for you to – in order for you to truly live as if your life – live as if your life is your art piece, you have to sacrifice something. Yeah. Now, I'm going to say that you have to sacrifice some aspect of yourself that enables you to connect to other people easier, if that kind of makes For sense. For sure. Fair. If that kind of makes sense. Like, most – and this is where the word eccentric comes in. Most of the artists that are supremely successful are so – it's like you're living in a, in a Venn diagram – are so into their world, the world that they created, their reality, that – they can't live in the one that we all commonly really exist in, or they can only live to some extent. Yeah, if that kind of makes sense. So, it, it's it's it. Th- man, you fucking killed it with the Full Metal Alchemist fucking shit. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, because it makes a lot of sense. Um, I find that as an artist, as I sink deeper into that world, deeper into that sphere, even even just on a day to day basis, you isolate more, you focus more on what you're doing. The time I take away the time I choose to do painting or whatever I do, even writing, um, I'm taking away from other people. So interesting. I think there's a, yeah, go for it. In what way do you feel like? Because even in, in the most basic sense, let's say I'm drawing, I'm taking time away that I could be spending with my family. I'm taking time away that I could be spending with this. Yeah. Now in a grander sense, imagine I have this great idea and I want to pursue it, but it's going to take two years to pursue two full years to pursue yeah. outside of the time that I have to spend around, you know, this, that, and the other thing. And let's say I'm fortunate enough to have a job that, or get to get paid off of the art or have a grant or some shit. But what I'm trying to say is like, the more you dip your hand into that well, that is you, the more of you goes into the well. Yeah. And the less of you kind of stays on the outside. I feel like something. So there's one thing you said that like really kind of like, set off like bells in my brain Go it was for um it. was the more that you dip your hand into that the more that you are taking away um time from other people yeah which i feel like i've spent a lot of time uh lately like kind of like thinking about the value of my time yeah. and i guess i would kind of disagree and think that like your time is never somebody else's Continue. um like I want to be surrounded by people, and I think that the more I dip my hand in the well, yeah. um, and, you know, I try to, like, still maintain relationships. It's not like I don't put of any course. effort into that. Um, and my doors aren't all the way open. Of course. You know what I mean? Not even close. I would give yourself but a little bit more salt, but, you know. Maybe they're a little open. I, I would sometimes. say they're a little bit open, yeah. But, um, I don't know. I, I think there's an idea that, the the artist who is super committed and they are 
Um, truly in their own world. They're truly like they are trying to live doors open. Okay, sure. Um, that they are intentionally excluding everyone else in their life that mm-hmm. isn't also willing to do that or doesn't mm-hmm. essentially fuck with what they're doing. Gotcha. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think that there is a balance, like, because no one, and I mean, no one really likes a person like that unless you're no. some super mega ultra unique talent. Yeah. But then I feel like even so, you're just kind of a super mega ultra unique talent who's kind of a dick. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, amazingly said, you'd uh, probably get said. there anyway. Yeah, um, totally. I, I think that. I don't know. I guess just most artists respond best at least in my experience to being around other people who they can dip their hand or their whole body or their you know their feet and their legs as much as they want to into Mm -hmm. that and the people around them will kind of like understand that they're doing that to kind of like further themselves and it's not like a they are taking time away from me Mm. i i don't get to see them because of you know they're like they're always painting or something like that or they're going to uh exhibits and just like talking to other artists and trying to like learn stuff um i would never feel like that is like personal at all i'd be happy for them you know what i mean yeah 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 i don't know no i i I really fuck with that i'm glad you disagreed with me cool because then it leads me to new insight and i completely agree with you i'm i'm thinking of the artist being in their own world as a truly cold individual and not a warm-blooded person, if that kind of makes yeah. sense. Because uh, uh, we say it all the time. We are social beings. We need to have connection. You, you, we, you can't be a man on an island. Yeah. You know, regardless of what aspect, in what aspect of life. And I really do believe that, like, well, now, or at least my eyes have been open a little bit, um, that it's how you choose to spend your time. And that if you surround yourself with people who are like, do your ghetto gangster shit, do your fucking shit, yeah, get it done, you know, I'll be here when you're when you're done, yeah, exactly. then you'll be better off, and yeah, yeah. and I feel like you'd be uh, at more home with your art and at more home with yourself, yeah, you know, and that kind of shines a light to who you are as a person, as I'm pointing at you, oh, who me. you are as a person. Where I could have this very cold, distinctive, like, if you if you lean too much into the well, because of my own personal experiences, but if you lean too much into the well, you're going to get disappeared by it. Yeah. And you're saying no. Which I think you could. It's like, possible. I think. I've been very close. I, yeah. Yeah, I've been very Same. close. I've been very close. But then there's always a person such as yourself or such as, you know, whoever, who tends to kind of pull you out and shows you the sunshine, you know? Says, yeah. hey, chill out for a minute, man. You know? You got people like here. Yeah, you can do a lot by yourself, but like you cannot do it all. You cannot do it you all. There is no such all. thing as a self made man. No. No, that man learned something from someone somewhere. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah. It's uh That's it's really. it's interesting to think about yeah. those kind of things. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, I guess like that also it is uh, there's a weird like I feel like, especially in an area of, I guess it kind of parlays into every creative kind of field, mm-hmm. um, but I'll speak from like a kind of music perspective, just because okay. like I'm a little bit closer to that. Yeah. Um, it, it feels not so much unlike, and I don't know if I'm just talking out of my ass right now, but I'm just kind of thinking out loud, we're going to see where it goes. Go for um, it. It seems like it could be similar to someone who's like... Uh, they're super dedicated to being a very um, like high performance business person, right? Mm. And they start not to care about every branch of what they're doing and what is like the ethics of every branch. And like, okay, I'll use like I'll use this this Chinese like sweatshop type thing mm-hmm. um, just this once, and you know, it's it's so I can like further myself. And like, exactly. not to say I'm some golden angel, like I have a smartphone and would, would exactly. have the stuff down here is probably you know what i mean yeah um it's probably it's really hard to avoid i imagine no most um, definitely but just kind of the the nature of like starting to not care like how 
the people involved in doing the thing that you're trying to do are treated. Mm. Um, that, I guess for me in this current moment in time, feels like the dangers of sticking too much in. Yep. Um, you focus too much in here. Yeah. Focus too much, or not in here, but like in... <sighs> What's the saying? You can't turn it off. No. You If you can't turn it off, you're fucked. No, seriously. <laughs> you are fucked. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy, man. And I live in a house of a bunch of Tauruses. I don't know if you're into star signs. I'm not really very knowledgeable in it, but mm -hmm. they seem like very grounding people. Yeah. Shout out to Taurus gang. Yeah. Um, are they Earth but signs? A lot of, I, think, I think it is. It would make sign. sense. I think so. It would make sense, but besides the point. Still, just yeah. people who are like force you or encourage you to be like all right yeah you gotta turn that off yeah totally. you're 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 on too much mm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. weird but yeah no no i totally feel that it's good to having a good support structure around you you know essential Esse uh, yeah no seriously it's even essential. if it's just yourself yeah no yeah. totally totally all right sir we were rocking at i, I want to end on like some like prophetic do we want to i want to end on some prophetic prophetic yeah um because we're at 35 minutes. Usually we cut it about like 42. Okay. Yeah. So, ending notes. Ending notes. Because um, we've covered a lot in this. And I think that we've covered less about nowhere, but more about who you are as a person. And I think that... Yeah. Yeah. No, but, you know... It, I feel like I... Yeah. I don't know. Well, let me explain. Okay. <laughs> it's not about the space... Because the space is just a space. The space is just things. It's about the people who populate the space. And, and the vibe and the aura or whatever you want to call it of the people that populate the space. And I truly do feel as the video that I showed you. Yeah, which is awesome. I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it. You alongside your, your, your housemates slash bandmates slash et cetera are some really fine ass people really good wholesome people like you like you're one of them oh yeah. fuck you <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate that um and i i really do believe it's places and spaces like this but it's less places and spaces like this it's more people like this that really shine through all the cracks and i'm gonna flash back to one thing that i actually forgot to say way in the beginning of this oh okay. which was I feel like in Connecticut, everybody has to be an entrepreneur yeah. to some extent because the people shit on us a lot. They, they just like, hey, you're just a fucking highway is the common thing, yeah. you know. So I feel like there is a lot of undeserved, not undeserved. I feel like there's a lot of undiscovered is a better word, undiscovered talent. And I do feel like you and this whatever space you pop populate because nowhere could could be your parents basement. Or nowhere could be anywhere. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, as long as it's on your back, I'm happy to be at that place, essentially. Thanks. Of course. Thanks. Just shower you. <laughs> yeah. Gassing your ass up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nowhere is a fantastic venue. Austin is a fantastic person. As is Jordan. Thank These you. These podcasts are dope, man. I appreciate it. Thanks too. for you and yeah. uh, the calf for, yeah. you know, letting this all happen mm -hmm. and making it happen. Yeah. Um, yeah Word. i appreciate it. i appreciate you taking the time by the way on kind of short I'm notice glad to yeah, Hell yeah it's dude. cool we Hell don't yeah. live that far away yeah that's okay it's like 15 minutes yeah we can just we can do this all the time every day every day yeah. literally every, every day, day. Man. twice anyway, a day twice a day i don't know about twice a day man. <laughs> get exhausted but anyway thank you my name has been jordan d alexandre this has been uh austin from nowhere and we hope to see you at the next show Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks for opening up your lunchbox, homie. Thanks. Yeah. You like? We can share. We can share. We can share. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the man. <laughs> You're a fantastic individual. I appreciate it, man. Thanks, bro. You're the best. No problem.